as a carpenter or a builder, we have to carry lots of weight and heavy items. Sometimes we can't get a mechanical machine in like a telehandler, and sometimes the lorry can only make the delivery to a certain point. And in our case, we've got to transport these trusses all the way around the site, get them into a position where we can bring them up onto the roof. And there's not like too many here, so we couldn't really warrant a crane. So what we're going to do is make a really good economical dolly or a trolley, if you like, to transport these around. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it for around about 30 pounds. I've been making transport dollies and wheels and that sort of stuff all my career to do different jobs. And these are just for lightweight work. You know, they're um, something that we make. We know how much each independent piece will take and then we can make an assumption of what it will safely carry. So what we've got here are wheelbarrow wheels. These will take 100 kilograms at 30 pounds per square inch. Then we've got some M20 bar, some nuts, some large washers. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some timber. This is some scrap timber. We're going to bore the axle straight the way through. We're going to attach a wheel either side, of course, using lock nuts together on either side of the wheel with a washer against the wooden block in the middle and that will give us a really stable, really strong dolly for shifting things like trusses and timber work. So I've decided that I'm going to make our platform, if you like, where the wheels are a metre long, because I think that that is the optimum length for me, that when we're resting, we can put it down like that and it's not going to be too tipping up or, or whatever. So also it spreads the load a bit further on the beam that we're carrying. So we haven't got to be so close to the center if we can't get to it. So we're going to take two pieces at a meter long. We'll cut those off first. These are just some spare timbers that we had left over. These are around about nine inches or 225. I just think that's quite a nice width. We'll go a meter long. We'll come down this one a meter. Then what I'm going to do is make two shorter pieces, half a metre long. This is what I'm going to drill the axle through. So that's our wooden components. We've got all those here. Now the trickiest part of this job, I reckon, is drilling through the axle, okay, because we're going to have to drill all the way through there at the thinnest point. So I've got a 20 mil auger bit. This is a long auger bit, and that will take me all the way through. And will we want to stay virtually in the centre of there? And of course, with a drill press or something like that, be quite straightforward. All we can do is this is around about 45 or 44. This is 20. So if I take 20 from 44, I've got 24. So if I use a piece of 12 mil OSB, so what we need is we want to go down the middle of there, same on this one here. So you can see it's going to be quite difficult to do this freehand, even like this, because you may wander off. So what we'll do is sitting on this board here or on the stool, it's nice and flat, in fact, we'll put it on the stool here. And then I'll use my OSB on this side to keep my drill against, like this. I'll keep it flat to there. That's flat on the stool. That's flat on there. And then I'll pass it all the way through. So I could also do one other thing here, is put a square line down the middle of this OSB to follow. So I can see if the drill's staying straight. Now you need a sharp a sharpish bit for this, I would say, because it still may wander around. But if I lay that down the middle, and then I'll, I'll run that through. Now let's have a look at the other side, and you'll see that's come through 
pretty much where, where we'd want it, roughly 12 millimetres. So that is a nice way of doing that by using the flat of the bench. We'll do the other one as well. Might take a bit of practice this, but you can put that on there like so and sight it through. Turn it out of the way, it's catching the chuck. And again, you've got something which has not wandered off too much, you've got a similar margin. So that's the basis of the underside. So what we would do now is we'll mount these onto here. Turn them round, they're a little bit more sensible. Put him out of the way. Got some nice stout screws. So I'm going to screw these on, just put six screws in. These screws are super strong. Obviously not in the middle of the axle. That would be mad. But we go one either side. Same here. So I could have actually just used one piece with the hole for it, but I figured having a bit more strength over the top in case that was likely to snap is going to be a little bit better. Now, the idea is we slide the bar through, which is our axle here. And then what we need either side of that is a pair of nuts because I want to use them as locking nuts we'll spin these on here, one on either side. So I put a pair of nuts and so I can just tighten those against one, one another like a lock nut. That's it. Then the washers would go on next. Then a wheel, obviously with that bit facing out so we can pump it up. We'll pop a wheel on and we'll pop another wheel on the other side. What I want to do though, to make it a little bit more, because this is a bit smaller than the hole in the axle, I've got a little bit of this white pipe here. If I split this, it's not exactly the same diameter, but if I use that across the thread where the wheel goes between the washer and the wheel, so if we just whip that off, so I'll put that through and I'll mark it just so it's flush. I'll cut four of these just so it's underneath. And what we're going to do is, so we want four of these, but I want to split the pipe with the spinner. So that'll go here like so. So I know how many to do. Four of these. So I've got four of these, and what I'm going to do with these is actually put them on the thread. The reason I've split that is so it'll fit on. Put those on the thread, and so where the wheels are against the washers, we've got something that will stop the thread cutting into the plastic. So I'll put one of those on each side. There we go. Now we can pop our wheels on. Nice. Pop our wheel on this side. Now we want another washer. Either side. 
pair of nuts and tighten it all up. So we've got our pair of nuts either side of the washers now and then we're going to tighten these pair up as well so they're locked against one another as well. And then that gives us something really nice and solid. That's it. Now I'm just going to shorten the bars. I don't have to take too much off, but I think you don't want to catch our ankles on them. That's it. If I quickly shorten those, I'll leave about four or five threads showing. That'll be absolutely plenty. So the only thing I need to check now is the tyre pressure and this is fundamental really because they say 30 psi which is going to be the right amount to do the weight that they say they can carry which is about 100 kilos. So that's the basis of our trolley. Now what I'm going to do for transporting the trusses, let's just flick this over the right way. Because the trusses are only thin, I'm going to put a pair of battens on here. So when the trusses are in, they don't slide around, so only the wheels do the, t do the steering, all right? Now, the idea of these is that for this particular job I'll do with this, I'll screw these on a little bit wider than the thickness of the truss member. So when it's on, it stays there and it doesn't skate around in the middle. All we need to do is keep it upright and walk with it. Again, some scraps of timber, we're just gonna screw those on as close to the middle and as close to parallel as we can get them. Don't have to be measured out if you don't want. And they will do a lot of our work because they will hold everything lovely and true. Now I think that for roughly 10 pounds, 10 pounds, the bar and the nuts were about 10 pounds, the timber we had, so let's say it's five as well for timber. So for about 35 pounds, you know, you can make this and it's going to last, if you look after this, I wouldn't mind betting it would last a lifetime. And that I would say is money and time well spent, not least to save all that clumsy lifting. You can see how easy that's going to be over this rough terrain, grass, stone and concrete.
and that is another trolley made up really economical pretty quick and now saving a lot of time and effort thanks for joining me on my channel please subscribe if you're not a subscriber if you love all things carpentry joinery and building Yep.